Hi, I'm Carlo Bella. Welcome to At Home with Pace African and Oceanic Art. Today I chose African Reflections, art from Northeastern Zaire, published in 1990. This is the catalogue for the exhibition centered on the Congo expedition of 1909-1915, sponsored by the American Museum of Natural History of New York. The first few essays trace the last 150 years of history of Northeastern Congo. This reads like an adventure book. From the middle of the 19th century, in fact, this part of Africa has attracted a very interesting cast of characters. We have explorers in search of the headwaters of the Nile. We have Arab slavers and ivory hunters. We have scientists looking for the newly discovered Okapi for the dioramas of Western museums. And finally, a bunch of military men trying to lay the foundation of the Congo Free State, which eventually became the colony of the Belgian Congo. The, the book focuses on the two main groups of the area, the Azande and the Mangbetu. The Mangbetu were first described by the botanist Schweinfurt, who arrived there with a caravan of ivory traders in 1870. And in his book, In the Heart of Africa, he describes in detail the great court of King Bunza and his royal court. 40 years later, the Congo expedition in 1909 returns to the scene and visits the Mangbetu at this time, there is King Okondo on the scene. The Congo, the Congo expedition stayed there six years, and throughout the stay, they took something like 10,000 photographs and they collected an incredible variety of uh, wildlife as well as objects. Throughout the book, there is a selection of magnificent photographs taken at the time, and between the photographs and selection of objects, it is easy to see why the myth of the Mangbetu and the Azande still lives on today. Superb, clean design is the common denominator throughout the area, and the book examines objects of everyday use, such as this fantastic stool, Magnificent object like this park box. The chapter on body adornment is fantastic and features some incredible hats, such as these. Beautiful hairpins, both in iron, which the Mangbetu were master workers, and in ivory. There is a chapter on royal authority and uh, regalia, which features some incredible knives, such as this one. And in the chapter of music, we here see some of the most classic and famous objects produced by the Mambetu and Azante. These are musical instruments, they are harps, and we are played for individual pleasure. Still talking about music, here are some examples of magnificent drums carved both by the Mambetu on top and the Azande. And again, back to the photographs throughout this book, there are spectacular photos portraying the orchestras of King Okondo in full action. Figures are much more rare and seem to have been carved for funerary purposes as well as, as prestige and presentation objects. Here is a very famous example of a Azande pair, male and female, in fact collected very early at the very beginning of the century. And this is an example of a Mangbetu figure. This was collected during the Congo exhibition, and it is now in the Museum of Natural History here in New York. Figures such as this are extremely rare, and only about 10 are known today. The exchange of gift was an important aspect of, tri of tribal political life. 
and it became an important way Africans and early administrators interacted in the very early day of uh, colonialism. I remember seeing the exhibition and uh, it left a mark in my mind, such as this book. In summary, the art from this part of the world exude extreme elegance and refinement. An object from this part of the world remain highly coveted by collectors and dealers alike. Thank you.